Hey everyone, Barry Owen here. Um, today I'm here with Rose Power. Hi Rose. Hi Barry. Um, today we're going to do a first in a series of sessions on the Wowza Video API. Um, the Wowza Video API is a, is a great tool for those looking to integrate video into a platform or an application. To get started, um, the first thing you're going to need to do to access the API is well, a Wowza video account. And then from your account, you're going to need to get a token. And the authorization token, the way we're doing it now is, is called a JWT. And to get one of those, uh, you go over here into your Wowza video account, you just click on your account settings, and um, you're going to click on this, this token management um, URL. And I already have it open here, so I'm just going to flip over to that page. And, and this takes you to um, the Wazza.com portal and allows you to create and manage tokens. A couple different kinds of tokens. There's personal token and there's a system token. Um, biggest difference is the system token allows you to assign different roles um, and kind of scope things. So I've already created one. Um, it's only going to show it to you once. So make sure you copy it and keep it in a safe place. And we're going to go ahead and populate Postman over here with our token. So uh, I've created a variable here. You see it's called the token. I've added my token value to it. And that's going to allow me to um, come over and run all these calls. So to get started, we're th this, this first session is just going to be very basic, um, a, very, a very basic live stream workflow and a couple different options, but, but really, what do you need to get up and running and actually send a live stream into the Wowza video platform and, and be able to view it? So the first thing we're going to do, I'm gonna go over, clean up over here so you can see what's happening in the UI as we progress. We're gonna create a live stream. So, you know, what we have here, a few basic parameters. We're gonna use the defaults for most of this. We're setting up a few things here. I wanted to make sure we got a 1080p stream set up. Um, I picked a location um, and then I picked RTMP as my ingest. So if I was using like a, a commercial encoder or something like OBS, um, RTMP is a, a typically the way you do that. So one of the things Postman is great at is being able to save some of the response parts of the response as variables makes your life a lot easier when you're when you're doing subsequent calls leveraging the same thing um, in this case one of the most important things you can save out is your transcoder id that you've created so we're going to go ahead and send this and now we've created a new live stream um, every live stream you create of course will have a unique id um, you give it a name, gives you some things about it, you know, basically reflecting what you what you asked for above. You know, in this case, the most some of the most important information you'll get back is this source connection information, which is how you connect your encoder to the live stream. There are two different options here. We're going to look at the other one real quick. Um, the biggest difference between these two create calls is this here, and this is what's called the stream source. And, and what a stream, a stream source has, has kind of two purposes. The, the most important one is, is it allows you to ingest your stream into a location physically closest to wherever your encoder is. So when you send a stream to that stream source URL, Waza Video is going to figure out the best place to ingest that stream from and route it to your transcoder for you. Um, another benefit of using a stream source is the transcoders will auto start when it sees data. Um, if you're not using a stream source and there's reasons to use them or not to use them, um, depending on your workflow. But if you're not using a stream source, you're going to need to actually start the live stream yourself, which is you know, something we can easily do with, with this call here. So let's go ahead and send it. And we're going to go over here and we'll see, I'm going to refresh my page here. And we'll see that we have a new stream available. And in this case, it's 
creatively called Wowza Video API Demo Livestream, and you can see that it's in fact starting. So now it's started. So we go over here, we can actually check the transcoder status with a call. And again, we're passing in our transcoder ID here. And we can see that it, it shows us down here that it's in fact started and it, and it has an uptime ID, which you can use to query some statistics. And then it gives you the IP address should you need it. A couple other things you can do once you've, once you've created your live stream. Um, when we created this live stream by default, we, we created a, a hosted player page and we can go and get some information about that by, by using this call. And in this case, we can get the embed code of the player. We can get the hosted page URL of the player and we can get the playback URL. So this gives us everything we would need to be able to play this stream back. Any questions so far, Rose? I'm following along. I, I guess I would uh, be curious about um, what type of information <clears throat> you can obtain from the player data here as far as the outgoing video bit rate. Would you find that information here or is that going to be in the next step when we talk about the transcoder usage? And the yeah, you're going when you look at when you look at some of the analytical stuff, which is kind of our next little block of stuff here we're going to talk about, that's where you're going to start seeing information about um, incoming incoming information into the transcoder, um, how long the transcoder has been running and also is you know, viewer data from the transcoder and that can come either from the player or it can come from the CDN itself. Okay. So it's a good segue, we'll jump right into that. So now that your transcoder is up and running, we're not sending a stream to it, but presuming you're gonna send a stream, you can get some information about it. Um, how long it's been running, has there been any, you know, is it outputting any data in us? In our case, it's not because we're not sending a stream in. Um, it'll tell you how many people are currently viewing and uh, how long the the aggregate viewers and the average as well. So, you know, things you can use. You know, and again, you can see all this stuff in the UI, but for these analytics calls, it's often very, very useful to get the data back in, you know, this, this JSON format via an API. So you can pull this into your own analytics program or you know you can use this as part of your your stream monitoring if you have a a way to you know react to things and you can continue to pull the api for for uh, this data Barry's one of the reasons that's important to pull this data is because sometimes advertisers that you work with for your stream they'd like to see this viewer data oh for sure and and you know obviously you can get the data and we'll we'll go We'll go highlight some of the viewer data here. You'll see that this one, you know, the transcoder usage has the transcoder usage call has very basic stuff, right? It's the, what you'll see here is if you're going to go get the live viewer data, is it's it's over time. So you have a sampling rate, and you can see over the course of your stream and over the course of time, which is really useful for for not only analysis but you know things like a graph of viewers and things like that, and you can match that to your content like you said, for advertisers to see, hey, you know, we lost people after seven minutes, all of a sudden people started going away, what happened? Um, things like that. And again, you can see this in the, in the user interface as well. You have, you have over here, you have your stream health, which of course isn't showing anything because we're not sending any data in, but it allows you to monitor to see if there's any problems. And, you know, some of the analytics we're talking about show up on this page. And, you know, both between the, the viewer data, the live stream usage summary, you know, those are all used to populate screens like this. And, and while you can certainly use this in the, in the Waza video UI, you can pull this into your own, your own application, or, you know, maybe you have an uh, Elasticsearch Cabana stack that you're working with and you want to do your own visualizations. Um, you have that freedom, that capability to do that by the ability to extract this data in real time from the, from the video platform. Gotcha. So the the transcoder usage is something you should pay attention to to make sure the stream is working properly, the viewers have a, a good experience. Um, but the viewer data that's that's also important. But the 
transcoder usage can uh, enable you to quickly troubleshoot should you have a problem. Do I have yeah, there, there's, there's two things you're typically going to want to look at, right? You're going to want to look at the performance of your streaming platform and your stream itself. Is, is my data coming in? Is my frame rate stable? Is my inbound bit rate stable? You know, do things, are things working well? And that really gives you the, you know, the more of the quality of experience that you expect from end to end to see, to make sure your users are seeing the best stream possible. And then what the other stuff you want is, is more, at, you know, viewer analytics, right? How many people viewed it? When were they viewing it? Where were they viewing it from? How long did they view it? And those are the kind of things that are, helps you judge kind of the effectiveness of your content and, and you know, your viewership. And we provide both. Um, so that's, that's, you know, a quick overview of, of how you get some of the data back. And then, you know, now that we've started a stream, we've, we've got some information about it, you know, we can go ahead and, and stop our event, tear things down. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and we're going to, we're going to stop the stream. So you get back a response saying, yes, in fact, that worked, it stopped. Um, we're not going to delete it, but you certainly can delete it if you don't want to reuse this this live stream in the future. Um, and then one of the other calls that that is proven to be quite useful for people is is you know, hey, can I get a list of all my live streams? How many live streams have I created? And you know, maybe when did I create them, and and when were they last changed? And this allows you to to really just monitor your account, know what's going on. Um, get get a little bit more you know obviously if you want to get more information about a particular one you you can pull that via the id and make another api call and get all the details i think it's important to point out here uh, that you may not be able to find the specific stream you're looking for by the stream name you want to look for it by this transcoder id is that correct barry yeah so we don't necessarily safeguard you from creating all your live streams with the same name. Um, obviously, I wouldn't recommend you do that, but you certainly could name everything my live stream. So, yeah, it's important to it's important to persist those transcoder IDs within your application somewhere, so that you know what you're dealing with. Um, if I were writing an application where I'm uh, creating a video platform, I would I would definitely be persisting my transcoder IDs and probably some other information about them, you know, with my, within my own database to to use further in the API. Very important. Thanks. And that is it for your basic live stream workflow. Um, please join us for sessions in the future. We'll get into a lot more details on the full extent of the API and. If you have any further questions, you can visit us at wowza.com. Thanks.